Here's one Kate Patello. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want to tie a knot in my uh, in his shirt. We were thinking it would be a little thing. cabana look, like yeah. we could both do I could it. Be your towel boy. Not in the shirt thing. I'm uh, Kate's towel boy. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up in today's show, <laughs> we uh, continue our ultimate gaming machine upgrade. By adding the very best sound and video we could get our hands on. Our greedy little gaming geeky hands we on. We did. All right. Also, free up some hard drive space, folks, because we're going to reveal this week's top downloads for your consideration. And later, Sumidas shows us what a little digital DNA therapy could do for you on today's Fresh Gear. Could it, could it make me taller? Could it, like, it's, it's, could it even could it make me my beautiful? Eyes? Yeah. Could you even dye my eyes to match my gown? So. Merry old town. All right. Before we introduce today's... Sorry, I just had to have a Dorothy moment. That was wrong. Before we introduce today's topic in the chat room, and you were there, and you... Let's check out the uh, final results of the last poll. Our question was, what does the biggest merger ever, the AOL Time Warner merger, mean for consumers? I'm not singing if I only had a brain. I just want to tell you that right now. Okay. But you think it all the time. 19% say it's good news for consumers. 65% say Wait bad news. That doesn't add up to 100%. Well, because the other 16% feel sorry for Jane. <laughs> With the 1% margin of error. Because Ted Turner is now vice chairman of the giant AOL Time Warner. Nope. She's like, giant. Prenup. Prenup, Jane. That's all I can say. What do you think? Do you think he broke up with her? Wait a minute, that's wrong. <laughs> We're not going to go This there. is not you really Kathy Lake. Like, today know. in the chat room, we ask you, would you low-jack your children? We better explain that. Don't read, stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put a chip in Corey. <laughs> low-jack is the oh, device you put on your car, not Kojak, low-jack. You put on your car, and when it gets hijacked, you call the police department. They turn it on, and it uses GPS to locate your car. It's something like a 98%... A return rate on stolen cars. Yeah. It's really great. So if now, the police department supports somebody's it. come up with a way to take a chip, put it in your kid's arm. Actually, they probably wouldn't put it in the arm. Oh, they probably put a lock it around their neck with a GPS transmitter in it. No, they're talking subdermal. Well, they can do it subdermal, but you know what? Neck. Of course, if they so did that, then the kidnapper would take it off. You're right. Subdermal. And then, uh, or maybe, you know, they could just you do a little, a little ear staple. How about a really short chain around the neck that's like welded closed and it, and it looks kind of... Something like that. Well, anyway. And the idea is, not all kids, obviously, but if a kid were at risk of getting kidnapped, maybe there's a custody battle going on mm -hmm. or, I don't know, for whatever reason, the kid might be at risk of getting kidnapped, you'd, you'd, you'd implant this chip with a GPS transmitter in it. And mm -hmm. then if the kid gets kidnapped, which, sad to say, does happen, uh, then the police could activate it and find the child just like that. Same like the uh, thing for your pets. You know about that? They're talking about putting chips in your cat's right. ear. Yeah, Same this idea. Is, this is a great idea. Although I think it is. I think it's supposed to monitor also accelerated heart rate. Even you can set it up so that if the kid oh, becomes sure. physically distressed, you're actually alerted oh, to that. Oh, sure. Oh, you could set it up for all sorts of things. Kids start smoking pot or something. You just go, the alarm goes off. Parents come in the door. Man. Say, You've got a chip in your arm. Yeah, when they're all 17, they're going to be like, Dad. Chip me. De chip me. Please. <laughs> Please. Please. I got a no, date I on think, Friday night. I have to say, it, while it sounds big brother to have a chip in somebody, uh, I have to say for, for those kids, I think that's a great solution for the kids that are Ooh. at risk of getting uh, kidnapped. I, I hear that. It just creeps me out. I mean, yes, if, if, if it were, came down to saving the life of my child so I could actually know well, where they exactly were, right. I could see the point. But still. I don't think you want to do a mass chip program. It's just for special But see, that's cases. just what's first. I always think of it this way, folks, and this is my little paranoid brain talking, but when you start in one place, like only kids at super risk of being kidnapped right. wear chips subdermally, then what happens? Then we're all doing it. Then right. the next Tomorrow thing, we're all doing someone it. else is going to need a chip under their hand. I think co-hosts should have chips. What do you think? Am I my co-host keeper? <laughs> Take our web ball. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, well, just press the activate press the button. button. You know what I mean? If they had a little shock thing, you could use, oh, stop. Great. I'm playing Grim Fandango at home. Stop. <laughs> Screensavers.com is where the web poll is, and while you're there, click on the talk back feature, of course, to sound off. Tell us how you really feel. You know, I'm hoping, come here, David. I'm hoping the chips aren't going to be this big. I mean, because I think they've got to work on the miniaturization because this is this is just a little too large, don't you think? A little, a little bit. Big, it's a little uncomfortable, is it, okay. David? <laughs> well, at least now we'll always know where you are. You can phone us, 888-989-7879. You know, there probably was a day, if we'd been doing this show 100 years ago, where we would say, and someday everybody will have in their home a device that you can at any moment activate and be able to talk to them. <gasps> Shocking. Like 888 or chat with us, chat.ZDNet.com. The screensaver's room is the 
main party venue. The main party venue, but of course the cool kids with neck cams are all hanging out in the neck cam cineplex because they're hanging out with Shannon in there. Who else is in there? Brad. Shannon and Brad hard at work getting his chip in. <laughs> Putting in the chip. He's all been right. low jacked. <laughs> He's been low jacked. And of course. I want a shirt just... that says boss. I like that. Hugo Boss. Oh. He's not, it's like an arty shirt. He's not the boss of me. He's not the boss of me. And, of course, if you're on the show and earn yourself a fabulous coveted screensavers magnet as seen on our fridge, to be seen on yours. And look, two uh, cute boys in that picture, they, Tom and Nick. What are they doing on the floor? I don't know. I'm a little concerned about that picture. I to see picture. the rest of that picture. I'm going to have to ask them what they're doing. <laughs> now let's talk to Jason, who's joining us on the ZDTV Freecom Netcam Network from Lockport, Illinois. Hi, Jason. Hi. Jason. And I've been gone for a couple of weeks, man, and I haven't tossed a magnet in days and days. I got again. Can Watch you, out. Can you help me out, man? Okay. Okay, I'm going to count to three. <laughs> He's like, uh, whatever, okay. okay. I don't know about this. Uh, uh, it's real hard. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to toss it, and you're going to catch it. Is this Larry King live? <laughs> One, two. Ow! Oh! Three. Okay. No yeah. reaction at all. Okay, now get to my question. I got it. All right. Let's Jason, what's your question? <laughs> Liar. You don't got it. <laughs> you don't got you it. You missed. I got it. I don't got it. All right. Tech show. Tech show. What's like the question? Tech stuff. Okay. How do instant messengers work? Ooh. Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> So you're talking about ICQ or AOL Instant Mail Messenger and so forth? Or I am yeah. here, power. I am here. I would bring in the chalkboard, but I've got this very elaborate thing already drawn on it for LCD displays, which we're going to show you how they work a little bit later on. So you'll have to allow me to use my fingers. Okay? Okay. So, <laughs> Go for it, man. This would be a perfect chalkboard thing. but So yeah, here you have me, um, Instant Mail Messenger me. number one, all right? Mm -hmm. And it, what it basically does, it all, you know, all Internet communications is basically the same. And so... I'm going to just kind of gloss over this because I don't know the exact details, but they're all essentially the same. What it does when it comes online is it opens a port. Right. We've talked about ports before. A web server opens a port. FTP server opens a port. A port is merely a software locus for connection. Mm -hmm. You could think of it as a soft socket. It opens a port, and at the same time, it broadcasts its presence to a centralized server, Mm -hmm. whether the ICQ server or the AOL server, saying, I'm online. Now, it'll periodically do that, mm -hmm. okay? To send up a packet. You Sends up a packet saying, I'm online, right. I'm online, right? And at the same time, the server communicates via the port and tells it what other people are online based on what you have written down here as your, okay, so as your says, buddies. I want to talk to Kate. Right. And then this says, well, she's not here, but when I sign on, it then says, hey, I'm Kate, I'm here. because right, Kate sends a message saying I'm online. This server is basically a switchboard, a giant switchboard. In fact, that's why sometimes ICQ calls itself the Internet dial tone, because really it's much like a telephone. The only difference is a telephone, unlike you're always online on a telephone, right? Because right? you're always capable of receiving calls. You're on the Internet, unless you're online, and you're not capable of receiving calls. So there's one, just like the telephone network, there's a switchboard, a main office mm -hmm. that connects people, but the one difference with ICQ or any of the instant mail messengers is you have to send a signal saying, I'm online now. I'm available okay. to receive calls now. And you get the message back about which of your friends is in that state as well. You know what that reminds me of? Auto insert notification. For your yes, CD it's periodically card. checking. Got exactly. any CDs? Got any yeah. CDs? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, and so there's some communication going back and forth, not all the time, but periodically saying, anybody new? Anybody new online? And when somebody new logs in, it'll show up in here and it'll show up on there. So it's, it's really a very simple thing, it, it, and it really the best uh, analogy is the telephone system, and as I said, the only difference is with the phone, you're always online, mm -hmm. and certainly with a cable modem and DSL, you'd always be online as long as your computer's on, but with the dial-up, you're only when you're online. Or and it would only online. periodically be sending packets That's up right. to the It always, yeah, as long as you got ICQ running, it's always sending packets back and forth. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? Yeah. That's basically what you wanted to know? Yeah. So when you install that software, you will then t ask friends if you can have them be on your buddy list. There you go. And that's the one that it'll be asking about. So let's say Kate's on my buddy list. I run okay. ICQ. I say, oh, let me add Kate, and I'll have to know her ICQ number or her handle. Right. Let me add Kate to that list. And then when it's communicating, you say, oh, by the way, is Kate on? Yeah. And it will say, it will look up in its database in the server. Mm, yes. And then it'll, it'll Until pop I get up here, online. send up my I'm here thing. That's right. All so right. So that's how they work. It's really very simple, but it's, a, it's kind of a brilliant idea. It's something the Internet needed, a way of knowing who's available to telephone. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason. And now we're going to work on our Marcel Marceau. <laughs> After the break, our weekly top downloads list for your live calls when screensavers continue. <laughs> Curtis 
courtesy of the ZDNet Software Library, it's presenting this week's top downloads. And at number five, pause, resume, and surf while downloading using NetZip Download Phoenix. I hate it. <laughs> you hate it? Yeah. I'm sorry, Leo hates it, but holding don't steady get it. at the number four spot. Okay, don't do it. ICQ, the 32-bit version. Like that. In third place, WinZip, the 32-bit version. That's good. And should the number one download not be able to fill, fill its duties this week's runner-up, the ever-popular Paint Shop Pro Thanks. will be able to step in. And the peanut gallery says for the second consecutive week, the number one top download is Godzilla. 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 Now that's a good program. See, the NetZip and Download Demon and Godzilla are the same thing. They do the same thing. So pick Godzilla. I prefer Godzilla or Get Right. The NetZip, I just never did it for me. Just didn't melt your butter? Didn't melt my butter. All right, well, all these programs are available anytime there at the ZDNet Software Library at HatFiles.com. Yeah, shaky. Chris is on the phone from Utica. Michigan. Hello, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Shane. Hi, Leo. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, is there a special setting or something special you have to do to have Linux work in SMP mode? Would oh, yeah, it? sure there is. Yeah, you got to downshift. You want to? That's the key. Well, you got to make sure you double clutch. Oh, uh, you got to pull the clutch and then you got to. Uh, Actually, uh. Don't try it like my partner. Do you have a dual processor system? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Dual Pentium Pro 200. Whoa, all right. Very nice. Huh. I like the Pro. That's a good server system. Normally, when you install Linux in a system like that, the installers of all the programs I've used, Red Hat and. Uh, Caldera and Corel, all three will notice that you have multiple processors and install the SMP kernel. So it'll just do it for you. But if you're taking an existing uh, installation and you're moving it to an SMP box, then you need to recompile the kernel. This is something not for uh, the faint of heart, but it's not too dif difficult. And frankly, if you're going to become a Linux hacker, it's something you need to know how to do. Recompile the kernel? Yeah. No, I'll so just run through, I'll run through this really quickly for you. Does, does this make sense to you? Uh, yeah, I read about it a little bit. Okay, yeah. In fact, the best thing to do is there's a mini how-to. It's not a full how-to. Mini how-to. Uh, it's called SMP mini how-to, mm -hmm. and that's really uh, the basic information you need. But I'm just going to give you the, the outlines. So if you're installing a new Linux on an on a, on a SMP box, it should recognize it. Uh, and the reason is what it does is it puts two copies of the kernel on the CD, and it okay. chooses the kernel for the, the SMP kernel instead of the other one. Otherwise, what you need to do is recompile the kernel. You get the kernel source code at kernel.org, www.kernel.org. By the way, this is a good time to do this. The new Linux kernel 2.2.14 just came out yesterday or the day before. So if you've been thinking about doing it, this is a good time to do it. You'll download the Linux kernel from here, the Linux kernel archives. That means the source code, the C source code. And then you'll run make. And usually what you want to do is run make xconfig. That's the configuration program. It runs in X windows. There's three different ways to do it. Command line, okay. uh, N curses, or X windows. You'll run the config, and one of the configuration settings is for SMP. You just say, yes, turn on multiprocessing. You'll have to do a couple of other things. The how-to talks about it. You want to make sure you turn off APM because that doesn't work. There are a couple of things you want to configure also in that kernel. And as long as you're going through the configuration, you might want to take a look at some of the other settings, make sure this is optimized. Then you build the kernel with, with uh, make, uh, gosh, I can't remember. I guess you do, a, it'll tell you make clean and then you make, do a make, uh, and then you do a make install, something like that. And then eventually you're gonna do make BZ Lilo or make Z Lilo or make, anyway, read the how to. I can't remember the exact details. But what you're gonna essentially do is compile a new kernel, move it over into the uh, boot directory. And there are a few things you wanna be careful about. For instance, you're gonna make sure your old kernel is still in the Lilo entries okay. so that you can, if it does, the new kernel doesn't work, you can boot anyway by going to the old uh, kernel using Lilo, kind of things like a that. Rain. We should actually, this would be a good segment. Mm -hmm. Someday when we do a Linux show, maybe we'll do it, which is compiling the kernel. Because it's, it's not a hard thing to do, but there are a couple of little things you should know about. Basically, read the how-to. You'll be able to do it. And okay. so I guess what I'm saying is when you do the configuration of your uh, rebuild, you'll be a choice for SMP. Okay. Or when you do a fresh install, it should choose it automatically for you. Okay? Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you, Chris. Do you think you could plug my site? Sure. What's your site? It's um, HTTP. Yeah, you don't have to tell me that. I, I know that. Oh, it's browse.to. Uh-oh. Now what? Welcome to? No, browse.to. Bra oh, browse.to. Forward slash the underscore edge. Are you on one of those Time, time Warner football phone things? No, it's got the free one with Sports the Illustrated. Is this help? The underscore edge? Yeah. 
Ed, where's Edge? Is this you? My friend have been working on this for a month, and no one's hit it, and we need his Are you Epler? Um, that's our school. Oh, neat. Oh. This is really cool. We did this for a project, and we, uh, for, and we tried to enter it in a contest. I love this site. Wow. Do you think you could send us an email replying about it? I sure will. We'll post it. Do you have a guest book on this site? Oh, uh, we haven't gotten that yet. Okay. Well, we're we on a deadline for the contest. Okay. So now this now is the school just for kids with cataracts, or is it just? No, this is just something we did um, special because me and my friend Andy both. Uh, he has diabetes and I have cataracts. This is great. Oh, and yeah. here's, here's your story. Here's Andy's story. And there's links. You have cataract links, diabetes, fat, wow. cataract. Wow. You know what? I have to say, Chris, you did this great. Now, are you blind or are you just... Uh, the, I'm le I was born legally blind. Legally blind. So how do you do this uh, blind? Oh, well, I have um, cataracts to see and glasses to read. So you are able to kind of see the screen a little bit or... Yeah, and I've had uh, about seven corrective surgeries to help me out. Do you use the uh, screen magnifiers? No, now after all those surgeries, I'm able to see like 20, 30. That's great. Oh, that's You're better great. than me. That is that's better great. than me, too. Boy. This is really neat. Wow. What's the biggest challenge of computing uh, for you? Um, sometimes the it's harder to see at higher resolution. Right. The words are harder to see. So you like the bigger text. And I noticed, by the way, you've done that. And this is very legible. You know what? This is a great this site. This is great. Look at the anatomy of the eye and everything. You did this with your school? Um. No, it was an after-school thing with our okay. technology teacher, Mrs. Grab. Me and my friend Andy both did it just on our, on our own time. What grade are you in? Um, we did it when we were in eighth grade, but now I'm in ninth. That's wonderful. Oh my gosh, Chris. folks! Again, that's browse. Dot two slash the underscore edge. And no one's gone to it yet. Well, they no will now. They will now. You have no idea. Everybody, go to Chris's site and go tell right your now. friends. And if you know kids with cataracts or diabetes, this would be a great resource for mm -hmm. them. Right? That's wonderful. That's a lot. All right. We'll put it in Chris. the show notes, okay? Okay. Thank you, Chris. And you're in the Linux now, huh? Yeah, we just we just started. That's great. Good luck to you. Thanks. Send Take me an care. email. Let me know how it's going. Okay. Okay. Thanks, we'll email Chris. you from your site too. Oh, no, yeah, we'll send you we'll send you an email saying what a good job you've done. Coming up next, our choices for the ultimate gaming machines, video and audio upgrades when the screensavers continue. <laughs> Screensavers.com is the best place for more information about the show. If you were me, you would bookmark the online column entitled The Daily Dish for an ample serving of Screensavers gossip. Tasty, fresh, and low-cal, this dish is always available at the Screensavers.com. And it's a good thing. That is scary. Thank you, Martha Stewart. <laughs> weird. I know. Have you been practicing that? That's weird. I? Would, would I have practiced my <laughs> Ooh, that's spooky. profession? You I'm afraid that. I'm wearing the wrong shirt. Get a blonde bob. I am not tightly starched enough to do this. <laughs> right. It's been a year since we showcased, actually, I think it was the first thing we ever did on the screen. It was. The ultimate gaming machine. And you know what? We're embarrassed to say we haven't revved it since then. Now, gaming technology's changed a little bit, so it's time for us to catch up. For heaven's sake. Today, installment number two of our three-part series, we're going to show you our picks for the video and audio subsystems. Now, of course, video. That was pretty easy. Uh, because there really is one card on the market that is faster, by, head and shoulders faster than any other. The ultimate gaming card. Yeah, and that's the GeForce 256 DDR, the latest NVIDIA chip. Two choices on that, the Creative Labs and the GMO. Mm -hmm. We put the Creative Labs 3D Blaster Annihilator Pro inside. This is double data rate. Okay. GeForce. So it's faster than your first GeForce. As you have mentioned before, reads and writes on... Both at rising and falling rising and the clock falling cycle. The, I love it how she says that. It goes, you know what that means? That means from zero to one and one to zero. Right. Up and down. The, about $248 for this card. Well worth it. We've never seen a card perform so well in our lives. Now the GMO, it might be a good choice if you wanted to use a flat panel LCD because they have a digital video interface, a ah. DVI interface on it. That would be the main thing between the difference between them. So okay? The features really right. on the card and the bundle that you Chipset like. Chipset is so good. Of course, we're not using an LCD screen. No, we didn't want to stop <laughs> at a mere 20 or 30 inches. We've got a 42 inch Yes Plasma monitor from Sony. <laughs> now, actually, this is the one we've had for a while. This is the A1. Sony now offers a new version of this monitor, the A2, which they say is 30% sharper. We're just going to have to upgrade. This monitor lists for. You do the honor. The old version or the new version? The new version. The new version is $9,999. Oh. You want to hear something scary? The A1, this version, was like $12,000. Yeah. 
Yeah, so you're saving, we're saving you three grand. We're saving you, you know, three grand. This is not, I would recommend, a monitor uh, for your desktop. No? You don't want to be this close to it. In fact, we have a hard time using it because we're often very close to it. This is a monitor where you'd want to be playing your games back here with a wireless sure. uh, joystick and really living it up. But, boy, it looks good. And for DVDs, it's fabulous. That's why, for video playback and DVD games, we chose a DVD drive. This is, the, this is I feel like Bob Barker. This is the Toshiba SDM-1212 DVD ROM drive. This is not region locked. Very important. Uh, now they quick, will be starting get them next month. Before they're region yeah. locked. Get one now. And you know what? It's only $71. That's a great price on a DVD drive. Huh. Inside, we've got a DVD hardware decoder. This processor is fast enough. We may not have needed it. We would like the, uh, the 5.1 uh, audio output. We like the ability to send it to a TV. We use the Hollywood Plus DVD decoder uh, that is from ha uh, Real Magic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, Sigma Designs. It's about $59. Not expensive. Dolby 5.1 output. All those great things. The hardware decoding is almost always the way you want to go with DVD. Yeah, it really makes a big difference. In fact, while we're talking, let's uh, let's show you some uh, some Bruce Lee action, shall we? Oh, yeah. We? All right, let's launch this up. Special features. Uh, what is it? Control Z, I think? Yeah. All right. There we go. And so this is uh, the 25th anniversary edition. Of, wow. Uh, and so you can see some of the cool features that are available in this. So, I mean, you know, you get, DVD is great, because not only do you get the movie, you get whatever they feel like throwing in on all right. of these extra bands. It's a double-sided DVD, so it's really cool. Yep. Now, let's talk about the sound card. All right. This was, this was one that might be controversial. We like the uh, Oreo 3D sound the best. Mm -hmm. I admit it. And that's what you get on the new Oreo Vortex. Uh, that's the Oreo chip is used in the Diamond MX300. Uh, so, that's an awfully tempting card. I have to say, though, we didn't do that. We went with the Sound Blaster Live Platinum from Creative Labs. That's a beautiful card, though. Well, but it's, yeah, because you have a front panel. I mean, look. This is so cool. Uh, not only can you plug your headphones in here and control the volume, it's got a mic input as well. That really is handy. These are MIDI in and MIDI out. And then uh, here we've got the Spit It for digital uh, audio in and out. And having that on the front panel makes a big difference. Now, the Sound Blaster Live uses its own environmental sound called EAX. Many games, most games, almost all games support EAX. I'm not crazy. I think A3D is probably better than EAX. They say they've got an, a, a software uh, A3D that they're going to implement. I haven't tried it. Don't know if it's good. But because every game works with Creative Labs, you can't go it's wrong with compatibility. Yeah. 100, about $135, believe it or not, for the Platinum. Can that, that's not right. That's a street price. That's amazing. I Somebody, thought that was the... We had a, Jen Mark is a very good shopper. Oh, you and know so it. she's found the she found the street prices on it. You want a bargain? You ask Jennifer Mark. Now you remember our old Ugham had flat panel monitors. They really Those looked cool. Speakers. Yeah, we decided to go with what everybody agrees now is the best multimedia speaker system on the market. GameSpot, PC, everybody says the Klipsch Pro Media speakers are the best around. And you know, a great price, two hundred fifty dollars for these. Around. That's the subwoofer. subwoofer. It's got four speakers. It's not a 5.1. So if you're going to watch DVD movies, you're not going to have a center channel. You might want to look at the Cambridge Soundworks 5.1 if, if DVD movies are important. Mm -hmm. But we think that the sound on this, the bass, just the clarity. Klipsch is one of the great speaker manufacturers of all time. Mm -hmm. They've really done, uh, done themselves proud with these multimedia speakers at a very good price. You can't get better for twice that price. No. Uh, hey, really good. The speakers that are mounted in my monitor, and it's still better than what I've heard yeah. on many external. Yeah. Yeah. These are great. So uh, that's basically the sound and video so far. Motherboard, processor, case, hard drive, sound, video, even the... Now, we've left the monitor out on this price. This is just today? Oh, okay. Oh. Forget what I just said. This so, includes the monitor. Including the monitor with audio and video, our total price for today, what we just showed you, $10,762. Oh, and let's not forget, oh, 99 cents for and, uh, yes, this. and 99 cents. Very important. you got to have this. So, so far we've spent about 15000 bucks. No, we oh, haven't. Oh, man. We've spent more than 15000 bucks. Almost 20. Yeah, almost, almost 20. 20. Almost 20. Now, if you take the monitor out, we didn't spend a whole lot today, about 1700 bucks. That's all. Check our website at thescreensavers.com for the article uh, I've written about all the, uh, with Roger's help, by the way, all the uh, uh, section selections for our UGM. Roger calls it Uggum Mach 2. We call it Son of Uggum. Son of Uggum. Uggum Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And tomorrow, Son the final chapter of Uggum's Upgrade Games and Peripherals will show you the controllers that we want to use. And we'll actually show you some of the latest, greatest games on here. Give you some idea of how well this new Uggum can perform. You know what we're doing, though? We haven't done it yet. So we actually, you and I don't yet know how well this can perform. That's true. We have not installed games on it yet. We could be wrong. Thanks.
says Lippin, folks. Never happened. Still to come on this very show, a look at the active, present, and the bright future of LCD screens. Also, more answers to your toughest computing questions. Get it active. active. Uh -oh. Plus, in embedded chips and digital DNA. All that and more. Whatever that is. The screensavers rolls on, my friend. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Kate Patella. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Today in the chat room, would you low jack your children? You know, the GPS chip. They're talking about a GPS chip, especially, of course, for children at high risk of being kidnapped. They, they implant can. it in their arm. They, the kids go missing. Police activate it. Track them right down. That's what they do with cars right now. That's what low jack is. It's yep. for cars. Same thing you do with your pet. I don't think they, do they do that with pets? Yes. I know they, they put do. chips for ID, but I don't think they have GPS transmitters. Well, no, it's not a GPS. It's but an it's ID. Still, it's an ID chip. It's right. the same kind of idea. So this would be this would actually be an active transmitter. <laughs> right. But I think again should be able to detect the early versions of these chips. You know, could detect whenever the guy who developed them if his heart rate was too right. fast, if he was sick, it would notify his doctor. Honey, you gotta go and get your battery changed on your chip. Honey, your chip is beeping. <laughs> what do you think? Take our web poll, screensavers.com. Good idea. Weird idea. Click on the talk back feature. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you can also uh, chat with us, chat.ztdnet.com. Well, only if you talk like this. <laughs> we'll be in there. Okay. Jason on the ZDTV3 Comcast Network from Garden City, Michigan. Hello, hey, Jason. Hello. hello, Jason. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourselves? Go blue. Yeah, go blue. We yeah. not. I see a big blue M. Actually, it's a gold M, but it's... That's in the back there. Are you a blue uh, banner, yeah. Are you a student at Michigan or? Uh, yeah, actually I go to uh, U of M. Hey, that's cool. All right. That's cool. What's your major, dude? Uh, communications right now. Well, you're doing a very good job. Well, thank you we very much. Educated. We give you an A plus, Jason. Uh-huh. This is extra credit. <laughs> now, actually, you, you can get a bonus point if you can communicate what's wrong with your computer. <laughs> well, actually, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm looking to upgrade. Okay. Okay, that's good. And I made the mistake of uh, buying the same sound card you guys did for uh, Uggum Jr. Yeah. You made um, a mistake. I'm looking, I'm looking for a sound card that will do optical out. What, 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 do you, what device do you have that does optical? A uh, mini disc. A mini disc. Yes. And it has optical cables. I think, but I may be wrong, but I think you can buy cables that go from optical out to SPDIF. The Sony Philips digital interface. So, that, you know, let's go back over here to Ogham real quickly right. and look at this. That's what we liked about this is SPDIF, which is the digital input. And I'm pretty sure, now I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that there are cables that will come out of your mini disc and go into the SPDIF. Because really all of, those, all of that optical cable is, is a digital interface. Huh. So you need something that converts that to this. Now, Actually, I, I, think the, uh, I think the SPDIF is uh, electrical and well, I don't it, think right. that works with light. So there'll be a box in the middle, obviously, that'll right. do some sort of conversion. Now, for those of us who don't know, I'm sorry, I have to ask, what specifies optical in terms Jason of audio? Jason is going to have to tell us that. Fiber? Why, Jason? It's, it's a low-grade fiber optic kind of connector-looking thing. Okay. So it's just so. another way of, of sending digital data. Right. Yeah. It's quicker. It's more efficient. It's right. the new thing. Okay. Uh, you know what? I, you know, I, they told us right before during the commercials that you were going to call, and I did a quick search, search uh, for optical um, interfaces, and I think I found a Toshiba uh, cable that goes from optical out to a spit it. Let me see if I can find it again. Okay. Let's That'd be great. It yeah. I mean, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm hallucinating. Uh, optical, I searched for optical audio and was really right on the top, so it shouldn't be too hard to find this. Uh, the mini disc appreciation page, that's you. Here it is, cable sales, Santa Barbara Film and Audio. And these are... Um, optical digital audio cables for Sony portable mini disc recorders. Yeah, but, but we want mm -hmm. them to go to spit it. Now, where did I find... What, what is the make, just out of curiosity? I'm sorry? Uh, what's the make of your mini disc? Uh, the MDS JE520. So made by? Sony. 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 Well, you'd hmm. think that since Sony made the digital interface... They'd have the cables. They'd have the cables. But you know what? I'm, I must have been hallucinating because I don't see any optical to that. And I don't know of anything that takes the optical 
uh, in. You know, that's it's designed to go obviously to stereo equipment. Right. So that's a really good question. We're just going to have to see. So here's the question: uh, Jason has mini disc player with an optical interface. He's mm -hmm. looking for a sound card that he can plug into the optical cables into, or I bet you there's a, some sort of breakout box that will translate one to the other and allow you to plug into the spit if. I, I'm willing to bet something like that exists. Or maybe if there's like a daughter board for the SB Live or... That's a great question. The other place to go, and I would have had I had time, is Deja.com yeah. and, and search the... You know, the, I mean, there's so many people out there who are doing exactly what you're doing. In fact, I've been planning to do it myself because uh, I want to be able to... That's one of the reasons I wanted that breakout front panel. I want to be able to copy my MP3s to Minidisc, just as you're doing. Right. And that would be the perfect way to do it, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's turn it to the third geek, for one. Yep. Check the message boards. The third geek, our audience. Out there, we've got many, many Uber geeks who watch this show. So go to the chat the room. Boards, go to the go. Give us a call or go to the message board. Screen saver message boards, and uh, let us know if you know by the if you tell us by the end of the show, we'll let uh, Jason know before the show's over. Otherwise, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay, Jason. All right. Okay. Hey, thanks. Now, let's put that communications work to work. Get you some extra credit. All right. All right. And I want you to do your best cheesy announcer voice <laughs> and take us to break. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Kate and Leo. Zoomidot gives a tour of the MIT Motorola Digital DNA Laboratory when the screensavers continue. Oh, that's excellent. Whoa, excellent. Dude. Now, big smile to get that glint off your tooth. All right. Good job. Smart guy, take the screensavers online Super Geek Challenge to learn more about your favorite toy, the computer. This week, what are the New Year's resolutions for the Native American Super Geek? Take the quiz and find out. It's all at thescreensavers.com. And congratulations to Roy from Augusta, Georgia, winner of yesterday's Super Geek hey, quiz. You got a t shirt or a fedora here? You could get the same. You could if you fill out the form after you've uh, taken that there quiz for your chance to win every single day. And now, as we promised, here's Sumi Das with a report from the MIT Digital DNA Laboratories on today's Fresh Gear. Your car has one, your stereo has one, even your microwave has one. What are we talking about? Embedded computer chips, tiny computers that control many, if not most, of today's electronic devices. But as powerful as these devices are, there's still one thing they can't do effectively, which is work together. Today we're in a situation where embedded computers are more or less isolated. They're isolated, maybe it's packaged in a thermostat, maybe it's packaged in your dishwasher or something. And we're at the edge of that isolation disappearing, that these will start intercommunicating with each other. And making them work together is the focus of researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Working with a $5 million grant from Motorola, MIT has just established the Digital DNA Laboratory, where scientists are developing embedded computer chips that are cheaper and smarter, perhaps even smart enough to communicate with each other. The Digital DNA Lab envisions a world where high technology is nearly seamless. Imagine a telephone that could screen your phone calls for you, so it would only ring when it's somebody you really want to talk to. And then it could turn down the television for you, so you won't be interrupted. Hello? But that's just the beginning. Digital DNA may also change the way we access information creating smaller and more powerful devices that can store a tremendous amount of information. What if the ink printed on paper could store digital DNA? A single book like this could store and display text with hundreds of titles in its memory. This is electronic ink. It uh, represents the first time that we've been able to make a display, a bistable reflective display, just by printing. In fact, we've been able to print this chemistry onto real paper. And you can imagine a book, uh, which we've called the last book. You press a button, open it, you're reading King Lear on hundreds of real pages. Done with King Lear, press another button, open it, you're reading Wired Magazine. And for those more interested in a totally wired world, MIT is also working on a way for you to surf the net with nothing more than the clothes on your back. All of the electronic technological clutter that you carry with you on a daily basis, pagers, cell phones, or wearable computers for that matter, can become part of your clothing. So, for example, here is a chip which has 
threads coming off of it and this is meant to be sewn directly into fabric. It's going to disappear into your clothing and be flexible and wearable and washable. But all these devices need electricity to operate and batteries are bulky and need recharging. Researchers in MIT think they might have the answer and power walking may soon take on a whole new meaning. This shoe can generate power and that means that when you walk around you want to listen to music or uh, search the web with a computer that you're wearing, uh, you don't need to carry batteries because your shoe can generate power while you walk. The possibilities are endless. With digital DNA, the future of embedded technology may lead to products and people that work and think together. You can get a new fresh gear every Friday afternoon at 1.30, 12.30 Central, right here on CDTV. Yeah, man. Here's an email from Manuel. He says, hey, dude, I'm planning on buying a notebook computer. I want to know the difference between a dual scan display and an active matrix display. So, what up? Comparing laptop screens when the screensavers continue. email from Manuel. He asks, I'm planning on buying a notebook computer. Want to know the difference between dual scan display and active matrix display. Active and passive. That's basically what it is. Dual scan is the latest passive matrix. And uh, to understand the difference, you have to understand how LCD screens work. So I'm going to show you in brief how LCD screens work. All LCD screens, and this is both on laptops and off laptops, start with a fluorescent light source, radiating light in this direction. Okay. They send the light through a polarizing filter to orient it in one direction. Okay, so okay. all the rays are facing this way. Mm -hmm. they have, and that's important, you'll see why in a second, that they all be horizontal, let's say horizontal. Here, now this said, let's, let's assume each one of these is one pixel on the screen, okay? okay? Each pixel has three LCD crystals on it mm -hmm. and three color filters on it. Ah. Color filters are red, green, and blue, okay? And, of course, as you know, red, green, and blue can be combined to make any color. Mm -hmm. and that's why we have red, green, and blue. The crystals have electrodes on them. Now, one of the, this is the key on LCD. When you charge a liquid crystal, it, it, these are super twist displays, all of them, it will, it, all liquid crystals respond in some way to electrical charge. Some right. turn on or off. These twist. And the more electricity, the more they twist. So they if refract the, the light, depending. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, actually, not refract it, but they bend this. They, well, this that's, is, that's this light is coming. Isn't it? If yeah, basically. It's not changing light. the color. But what this is, let's say this, this light is coming, the twist will turn it. And say point more it. towards the green. Right. For if it, well, no. no. Actually, it doesn't. It's, now, that's how you would think it would work. It doesn't. All, this is stays white light. The, these are actually filters that are going to color it. Okay. What it's, <laughs> it's a weird thing. What it's going to do is it twists it. Okay, the degree to which it twists it determines how much of it's going to get through a final polarizing filter here. All right. So it sends them through red, green, and blue. Now, if this is twisted 90 degrees, 100% of the red is going to get through. Okay. If it's twisted 45 degrees, that's half the current, half of that's going to get through. Okay. Half the green. If it's twisted uh, zero, if it's not twisted at all, if we've applied no current here, none gets through. So that's how you so know. So then it. I'm going to combine. This will be 100% uh, red, a full red, with a half of a green. I'm going to get a brown pixel. All right. I get so it. So it's by twisting the light, and then this is, let's say, this. I can't remember. I think this is a horizontal, and this is vertical polarization. So, But it's not perfect, so less gets through, but not none gets through. Because normally in polarization, it's either on or off, right, uh -huh. if it's not aligned perfectly. And the less aligned it is to the polarized filter, the less gets through. If it's perfectly aligned, 100% it gets through. 45 degrees alignment, 50% gets through. Okay. So that's how all LCDs work, basically. All right. Now, what changes in the passive and active matrix is how we charge these crystals. An active matrix, they actually put a transistor on each pixel. So there's like four or five transistors here per... Per pixel. Per pixel. So that we can... Yeah, I guess there would be one per crystal, wouldn't yeah. there? Yeah. So that in that sense, that way we can completely control the crystals perfectly. LCD is cheaper because they just put a relatively few electrodes on the side, and they use timing to determine which crystals get charged, okay. which means the crystals start to fade as the screen gets refreshed. Okay. That's why it's dimmer. Mm -hmm. That's why it's harder to see at different angles, and that's why it's not as fast. So active matrix is more expensive because there's a transistor on each crystal. Okay. 
passive matrix uses uh, fewer electrodes and uses timing to determine which crystal in the refresh phase is being Switch charged. Switch on and how much. Right. Okay. So now let's show you what the impact of all of that is. Active matrix is more expensive, but it gives you a much better picture. We have three computers here. One active, actually two active matrix and one passive. Now I can tell you very quickly how you can tell if it's passive matrix. We're going to start, this is a Toshiba. Now, uh, can you see the picture there on the Toshiba? Uh-huh. I'm going to rotate this so okay, that, whoa, the there goes the picture. There it goes. Okay, it starts to disappear about 45 degrees. Now let's move over and look at this Dell. Okay. This is an act. Oh, I just gave it away. This is an active matrix. Now you really can't tell on TV, but this is. But look, you, you can, can still see, see those it, icons right all the way. Around. This stays legible, uh, readable from almost 180 degrees on? around the sides of it. So passive matrix is not as bright, and when you turn it, you can't see it as well. You have to be looking at it pretty much straight on. Now that might not be a disadvantage. If you're sitting on an airplane, you're working on you want some privacy. private stuff. You right. know that kind of limited visibility is not always a bad thing. It's also now it's cheaper. Not a lot cheaper in these days because they've really gotten the prices down on the active matrix, but it's still cheaper. But it's slower. It's easy to lose the mouse because this refresh, these electrodes aren't giving you as bright a, a signal. Now, this is the newest thing, and this is actually kind of cool. This is the Portage 3010 CT. Yeah, we're trying to get image on. Is it not on? You know, I tried. Oh, oh, it's asleep. Oh, it's asleep. Oh, you just turned it Did off. Did I just turn it off? Yeah, that's all right. It's, okay. We didn't really want to see it. We didn't. Because oh. you know what? It looks exactly like active matrix, but it's a new technology that's kind of interesting. It allows, right now with active matrix, the electrodes. The, uh, remember the, uh, the uh, I said there's a transistor on each uh, pixel, but they're on the outside here with wires into the pixel, right? Mm -hmm. This is a new substrate. Look how thin this is. We were talking about this with Alfred Poor, uh, who is uh, big into displays, and he was telling us about this. This is the first commercial uh, release of this. And what's neat about it is be the new substrate allows you to actually put the transistors on the pixel, so they're actually so it's thinner because there's no extra electronics, and the transistors are actually on the pixel, which means more reliability, that brighter, faster. and faster. Right. So this is a new form of active matrix called. And I wish I could remember. I can't. There you go. Now you can see it. By the way, see you can. You know, it's so hard to tell on TV, but believe me, if you were here, you'd be able to read this from the edge. It does lose some brightness, and I guess our cameras just. It's can't hard pick to it tell up. on camera, folks. But I'll this tell you. Poly, from here, a polysilicon I'll display is that what it is, Ken? Okay. So, I, Alfred told us. Anyway, this is the newest active matrix, and this is now not necessarily cheaper to manufacture, but it's more reliable and it's more, uh, it's thinner and it's maybe more it robust. I think more with yeah. all the transistors required. That's a lot. Well, it's the same number of transistors. It's where the transistors are, that's but it's a new, it's a new substrate that is electrically more conductive. Huh. Anyway. That's the difference, basically, is they all they kind of all work the same way. Fluorescent light shining through crystals, which polarize the light and then filter it, and then only certain colors are allowed to get through. The question is how you how you charge those crystals. This does it in a cheaper but less effective way. This is more these more effective and more effective still. All right. All right. I hope that I hope that makes sense to you. Makes sense to me. Okay. I hope they feel okay. Like you. Folks, start enjoying those 15 minutes of fame, huh? Record us, send us a email. Oh. Ah. Ooh. Or he'll hurt himself, you see? Instructions in your scripts are waiting at thescreensavers.com. Just click on Interact to find out more before he hurts himself. Bye. Now, Rob, help us. Okay, everyone, we'll be right back to Screensavers in just a few minutes with my two favorite geeks, Kate and Leo. Preliminary results of today's poll. So far, 70% of you are not going to chip your children. Hmm. Well, alrighty. You've got 24 hours to beg that to differ. More chips for the rest of us. At the screensavers.com. Does it make those a BBQ? <laughs> I want that cream and onion. Mm -mm, good. Let's uh, let's uh, take a look now at some of the email we get every single day. Right. Hundreds of email messages. We can't answer them all, but we'll try. Gary, if they chip me, will I be able to play the violin? <laughs> Gary, Did you play the violin before? No. Oh. Gary in Midvale, Utah. Dear Kate and Leo, I heard Leo mention moving the swap file to another drive to improve performance. Yes, we do this all the time. I started to move mine, then Windows gave me a warning about life as I know it coming to an end. Yes. And I thought I'd better ask you. Life is not going to come to an end. Here's what you do. Set it up to go, say, on your D partition, double the amount of your RAM as a hard swap file, yeah. and you'll be fine. I know it says it's coming to an end, but you can manage it yourself. They, they don't like it. They, you know, there's risks if you manage your own RAM if you do it wrong. But You're going to break it. 
Just because do what Kate said. You'll be fine. Yeah. I was wondering, when you reinstall Windows, ask Jason, do you lose all of your information? Depends. If you do an install on top of your existing installation, not no. at all. No. Same all it does thing. is, yeah, it fixes any damaged files, fixes any registry entries that are corrupt, and the rest of it's okay. And that's why install in place, as I call it, uh, is often a good way to fix problems. And no, you don't lose anything. Now, if you format your hard drive, yeah, you lose everything. Of course. That's it for this edition of the Screen Savers. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Kate Patello. Thank you for sharing. We'll see you next time on the Screen Savers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.